Hey there guys, uh, it's Stephen here. It is the day after. A very, very, very disappointing night. Um, that wasn't a night that I'll forget anytime soon and it really, really, really stings. If you're wondering why I didn't make a video last night because I really wanted to just go away and think about the game for a little bit. If I made a video last night, I would have sat here and just moaned like a little bitch. I had no intention of doing that. I'm not really an Arsenal fan TV kind of guy. I'm not really one for just sitting and ranting and just swearing and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't really do the mind any good and it's a little bit childish. So I thought I would basically have 24 hours off, think about the game a little bit, cool down down, calm, and then try and approach where we went wrong, and uh, it still stings, I've been sulking all day, I'm sure you're like me, that you've been thinking, oh this is crap, I was sat between two Liverpool fans today at work, they even played You'll Never Walk Alone above uh, on the office speakers, and I couldn't escape Liverpool anywhere, and there was all the bullshit as well going around Twitter today about the coach stuff, and basically there was just loads of noise everywhere, and I really wanted to escape the game today, and I just couldn't do it, uh, but the video is here, and I'm sorry for making you wait, but sometimes it's clear Sorry, it's better to have a clear and fresh mind. And this is as close as I'm going to get uh, before the game runs away from me in general. Um, so, yeah. Well, that was pretty shit, wasn't it? That was a night that I want to forget. Um, it's a night that we all want to forget, but it's happened. And we're going to have to deal with it, unfortunately. Basically, everything that we thought could go wrong basically did go wrong. Uh, I don't even know where to start with this because there's so many things going on, but football, it's a funny game, isn't it? It gets right in there and it really, really gets to you. I'm not usually much of a bad loser. I can normally shrug games off, but this one, I don't know why, it felt a little bit worse than most games and I've really struggled to shake this one. And maybe it's because we just win so often these days. Maybe it's because we're so good uh, that we rarely lose and genuinely we rarely lose that when we do, it just stings a little bit more. And maybe as well, it's because we've already wrapped up the league basically uh, where obviously there's no other competitions basically that we're competing for I know we haven't won the league yet but we're going to win the league and uh, maybe it's because this was the big one for us this was our big focus for the rest of the season it felt like we basically just bottled it it isn't over yet of course but it feels like we basically let a golden chance to prove the scouts is wrong and they proved themselves right annoyingly it really really hurts I mean where to start individually it wasn't a great performance. No one really came out that smelling of roses. There was largely a, a collective bottling, if we're being totally honest. Did the pressure get to the players? I'm going to say yes, it did. The players could turn around and say it didn't. But I guess the evidence was there in front of us. And a lot of people were saying uh, it was all down to Guardiola, blah, blah. The, the system didn't really help. And I would probably slightly buy into that. But this is a, a collective uh, problem. In general, uh, maybe the system was wrong. But the players, it just got to them. They didn't handle the pressure on the night. They didn't handle probably the atmosphere, if we're being totally honest. Maybe the occasion with all the nonsense with the coaches beforehand. Uh, and they didn't handle the game very well. And the, the plan, obviously, was to sit back and try and soak up Liverpool's uh, intense onslaught slow in the first 30 minutes that's obviously why we played so many midfielders to try and draw them in and if anything it was probably too conservative for Guardiola he actually changed it and showed too much respect for them in the end a lot of people were saying well why didn't Guardiola you know just sit deep and try and soak up the pressure that was Guardiola trying to do that he actually tried to be a little bit more uh, reserved than he usually does hence offering them a little bit more protection theoretically to kind of stop the really deep press but it just didn't work the players looked a little bit lost it looked a little bit confused uh, and as soon as that kind of fell apart, uh, maybe it was an offside goal, but they still deserve the win. But, but as soon as that kind of fell apart, the players lost their bottle a little bit, didn't know what to do. And even people like De Bruyne and Silva, usually reliable players, their touch went. Uh, they had nothing on the ball at all. He created next to nothing throughout the whole game. And largely, we were pretty useless. Now, I understand why Guardiola tried to sw uh, switch up a little bit. He obviously tried to get one over them. A lot of people said, this is arrogance in Guardiola. I don't really, uh, I don't get that nonsense at all. You can't have someone like Guardiola a man with all his brilliance, with all his wonderful, uh, intricate, precise uh, methods, and then moan when one of them doesn't work. I mean, we've been here before, people saying last season that Guardiola's style, or he's, he's not pragmatic enough, he'll never adapt to England, yeah, he played the best football England's probably ever seen this season. And I think he's allowed a mistake or two. It did go wrong last night, and Pep will probably admit that to himself. He tried to not say publicly, but deep down, the players and themselves will know that it didn't work. That doesn't make him a bad manager. It's very reaction from most people. I've seen loads of people on Twitter saying Pep has messed up and he's heaven forbid people saying he isn't good enough I mean I can't get behind that kind of mentality at all it's reactionary, it's childish and it's stupid 
he had a bad night. The whole team had a bad night and they left themselves in a bit of a mess. But what we do need to realise is that a little bit of perspective here and we are still the best team in England. We are breaking records left, right and centre. We are absolutely glorious to watch and we have a very young team. It went wrong, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean the style's wrong. It doesn't mean the idea behind the principle was wrong. The execution was poor. But the ideas, they, were, they made sense on paper, I guess. We just didn't get it right. We didn't get the performance and maybe Guardiola didn't convince the players enough to get behind the ideas and they looked a little bit confused out there. They looked lost and as soon as that goal went, their heads went. For the first 10-15 minutes, we looked pretty all right. We were controlling the game. Even the uh, the commentators were going, oh, City had, you know, they were setting themselves up for City controlling all the game. But then it just went wrong. And that's football for you. It can change just like that. And Liverpool, in the end, they deserved it. I was disappointed by the senior players for David Silva, company Otamendi. Otamendi went back to the Otamendi of last season. Even Walker, a more experienced player in our team, I thought they were largely uh, diabolical. They should be doing better than that. Gundogan, he didn't have a good game. I saw some people giving him a 1 out of 10, which is just ridiculously harsh. Um, I, I don't think Gundogan is at the level of De Bruyne and Silva, but I do agree with those who said, ask him to do a job as a defensive midfielder on the right hand side. He basically was playing on the right hand side of the pitch as a winger, having to track back. He was largely terrible at it, I agree. But also, he was out of position, so I will give him that caveat there because it's always worth mentioning these kind of things. You have to be fair in your analysis. But it didn't work, and in general, uh, he was one of many weak links on that team. I think Sane was the only one for me, really, uh, who came out with any kind of credit, apart from maybe Finn and Dino in the second half. Sane didn't play well, but he kept going, and the tactic was clear to just to play through him constantly, and it became very predictable about 15 minutes into the game. We kept trying to hit the diagonals to hit Sane, and he kept trying to run the man, but he kept getting it wrong. And after he made the mistake for the first goal with the, with the wayward pass, he didn't look as confident as he did early on in the game either. It just one of those nights where everyone pretty much had a stinker, even Edison and Gabriel Jesus, these players, these usually reliable players, just didn't play well. Sometimes you've got to hold your hand up and go, the better team won. On to the coach nonsense. I can't really not touch on that. Uh, that was pathetic, really. I think a lot of football fans in England, or maybe Liverpool fans, equate passion uh, with being a twat. I'm sorry, no, that was just being a twat. Get your flares out, sing the songs or whatever. When you're smashing up a team bush, you're being a bell end. That's it. It's, there's no excuses for that. You're being a knobhead. I'm, I'm gutted that the game was even marred by all this nonsense. I wish they'd just, um, you know, beat us fair and square and there was none of that bullshit that went around it. As it is, it was marred by that nonsense and the worst thing about it as I've seen some Liverpool fans showing football trialism at his very worst, saying there was nothing wrong with it. Just don't be so childish. Call a spade a spade. Say they were being balanced. I would say the same as City fans were doing it. It's not hard to say it. Uh, and it was knobhead behaviour. And the worst thing about it, it looked premeditated. The police obviously even putting the new coach route out. Like, who did that and why did they do that? That didn't need to be done. It was obviously done for a reason. Liverpool obviously even apologised afterwards. It's just unnecessary. And it's marred what should have been uh, an amazing life. Liverpool, they'll probably say they don't give a shit and they probably won't, but that's <laughs> certain Liverpool fans for you, but it was a mess, it was horrible, it was shit, it was Belen's being Belen's Shit, sorry about that. My big camera went flat. I could not be arse charging because in the middle of a run, so I've got my little one. But yeah, what was I saying? The behaviour of the Liverpool fans, those ones in particular, not all of them, of course, it was just childish. And that's the kind of stuff that clubs and fans shouldn't be wanting. We don't want the 80s back. We don't want that football hooliganism uh, kind of disguised as passion nonsense. It's not passion. It's just being a dickhead. And that's all there is to it. And before people will say something, this isn't excuse making or whatever. I mean, the football players largely know how to deal with this kind of stuff. Though he did probably get to them. I'm going to admit you probably did. I don't think they'll admit it themselves, but I think the evidence was there on the pitch where they looked a little bit shell-shocked, probably understandably. But I guess players uh, of their, their experience will probably claim they're used to it. And maybe they are. Maybe it's just my opinion there. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, it was a shame the game was marked by that kind of nonsense, really. I just wish certain individuals had played a little bit better and shown the experience that they bring to the team and actually rose to the occasion. It just feels like Anfield is our kryptonite. And fair play to them. They're, Liverpool were up for it. They played better. We should have really controlled the midfield. Uh, they looked on paper as average as that is, given the fact that we got some of the players of the season in our midfield, but it didn't happen. Uh, players played badly. The formation was wrong. Everything went wrong, basically. 
So I know what you're thinking, is there actually any positives for this at all? Well, I guess the positive for me is that we can't really be much worse at the Etihad. Is the tie over? It's kind of over, but kind of isn't. Miracles can happen. And if there's one team in England that you want to score uh, three goals unanswered, four or maybe four goals unanswered, or at least take it to extra time, it's probably be City. Don't forget, we beat them 5-0 already at the Etihad this season. We are largely excellent at home. Uh, their away fans won't have any, anywhere near as much an impact as we did, uh, as they did at Anfield, sorry. Uh, the atmosphere will be totally different. We'll play on our own terms and hopefully we won't show them as much respect as we did last night, in my personal opinion. We'll go out them, we'll attack them and if we get an early goal, stranger things have happened I would not be surprised if we grabbed three goals or maybe four if we scored one within the first 20 minutes would you be surprised honestly you probably wouldn't because that's football and that's what we're capable of doing and Liverpool they don't have a history uh, <laughs> history that's that word recently uh, uh, seen jobs through they do have a history recently uh, kind of bottling big games and big moments so I wouldn't be surprised if their head went a little bit too if we got at them and started scoring a couple of goals because Liverpool are the kind of team they play in emotion and play on feelings and while it's a very good approach it's also a flawed approach in terms of it also gives the team that are attacking them opportunities if they get under their skin and if we get under their skin early on they will start to panic and they will start to wobble but that's fingers crossed. Um, it wasn't a good night of football, was it? I am glad I've calmed down a little bit now. Uh, making this video almost feels a little bit cathartic in, uh, in, in a way, I guess. It was a terrible night and it stung massively, but this happens sometimes. We are a team that's still developing. We've still got a young squad. We've still got a manager who will, despite his near perfection, make mistakes every now and then. And he would be the first to admit that himself. Maybe some people, they just can't get around certain managers. And Klopp seems to be Guardiola's kryptonite. And so be it. I'm sure we'll learn from this. Hopefully, we'll learn enough to take uh, th th them on at the Etihad next week. Uh, but if not, so be it. We've got the uh, United at the weekend. Then we could be about to win the Premier League. Only Manchester City could win the Premier League and still be in crisis uh, a few days later. That is the glory of this club, and that is why I love it. Guys, I don't even want to know really what you thought about the game. I've read so much negativity um, in the past 24 hours that I'm trying to escape it. This video, for me, is just like kind of drawing a line of the game. That's why I'm making it. But, yeah, uh, yeah shy night. Uh, can't get much worse next week. Fingers crossed we can perform a miracle. See you later, guys.